each media is different. It's a different challenge. So, I mean, probably movies, pr probably. But uh, I also like theatre. Uh, but uh, movies is a bit more exciting than TV series. Although nowadays TV series is very fashionable. The big TV series, uh, American TV series, Canal Plus. Uh, probably in Spain you have TV series that I never saw. So. Um, I just like uh, the business as a whole. It depends on the adventure. Each adventure is different. Well, I like to think that I'm fairly comfortable in all the different genres, even in comedy. But obviously, I, I have a, um, a leaning towards drama and psychological drama and obviously horror. For example, I will tell you an anecdote. Just recently, a few weeks ago in France, I was rung up and asked to go and coach some young theater actors who were making a short horror film in an abandoned prison near where I live. So I was going, oh my God, I had to go and coach them about horror movies. What am I going to do? And so I, 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 I went and uh, I realized that um, for me it had been relatively easy to uh, enter into this genre. And for them it clearly wasn't easy. So it made me think uh, um, it is maybe something special. I, th I think I probably have a particular talent which I didn't realize at the time. I just went for an audition and I got the role, so then I had to try to be as believable as, as possible, but it was relatively easy for me. So that's what I told these young actors. I said, just believe, uh, you know, the monster, just believe, you, you know, just do it, just go into those deep, dark depths. Right now, I, um, because I live, as you know, in France, I uh, formed an English-speaking theatre company in the south of France and uh, we are a group of uh, 10 people and we are uh, performing uh, mainly British, well Anglo-Saxon, um, British or American authors and because there's so many English-speaking people living in the south of France who probably don't go to the theater in French because they don't speak French well enough. They, they, they come and they, they love our productions. So uh, I'm involved, not directing, but I'm involved acting and producing in, in the theater. I don't make a, a living out of this. It's not very much money in theater, but we do it um, for love and uh, passion. These days, uh, I really get a kick out of uh, working with what I call the younger generation because there's so many young directors today that have been influenced by um, the Italian horror scene of the time, of the era, and particularly Lucio Fulci, that uh, they get in touch with me and depending on the project, it can be a short film or a feature film. I, if it's good, it has to be good and be of quality, then I will do it. For example, uh, I'm quite proud of a film which is about to have a release and certainly a DVD release in America that has been shot by a very talented young French director. It's his first film. His name is Romain Bassé. Um, it was shown in Sitges recently. It's doing the festivals. It's a film. It, it was called Fever. Now it's called Horsehead. And uh, it's uh, quite, a, quite an original piece, quite uh, almost experimental. Not your classic uh, horror or gore, um, but a very uh, yeah, it's quite poetic piece and really beautifully photographed, fantastic. The director of photography already won a prize in Argentina. So I'm quite excited about this project. It's uh, technologically different. Um, I think probably 
you have even uh, less time uh, now because uh, obviously time is money but you know they can kind of correct everything technologically which wasn't the case before so you, you had to get it right and the special effects had to be because they were physical special effects they weren't with a green screen or uh, you know Photoshop or something like this they were real uh, so they had to be right but uh, uh, those days were nice, they were, you know. Don't want to sound like my grandmother to say it was better before, but uh, it was pretty good, it was, yeah. It's just so extraordinary that uh, 30 years later, we are still admiring, talking about, celebrating those films because I really thought at the time that nobody would see them outside of Italy. So despite the, the, the very violent content of the scripts uh, and, and the movies, uh, I, I, I really thought it was okay to do them because uh, I didn't think anybody would see them in Britain or France or America or anywhere else. And my agent told me that nobody would see them. He said, it's okay, you can do it. I do particularly remember the last scene of the Beyond where we have these uh, opaque uh, lenses. And that was uh, very, very difficult because although they were made for us individually, they were incredibly uncomfortable, really, really painful. So we couldn't keep them on for very long. But you know, maybe it was just as well we were wearing them because I think we probably weren't too aware of this very um, macabre decor that is incredibly effective in the last scene of The Beyond. Everybody usually asks me about the last scene of The Beyond. The La Ballada de la Trompeta Trista, I, I don't know whether you would call that horror, but I saw it at a horror film festival. I was president of the jury and we gave it the prize in France. I think he's absolutely extraordinary. Hello, my name is Catriona McCall and I would just like to wish greetings to the followers of terrorweekend.com. <laughs>